Okay, good. Yeah. Sorry, I spoiled a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, chasing the internet bubble, like blockchain, chasing the internet bubble can be challenging, pretty challenging. Uh, it's like playing a huge bingo game. You know, at a certain point, somebody gets lucky, but you just don't know when. And all you can do is you purchase an entry and wait, and wait. Believe that one day something that somebody is going to be you. Yeah, for example, for artificial intelligence, it looks extremely hard right now. A lot of people they, they want to start a company in artificial artificial intelligence. I was uh, asked to give a speech in artificial intelligence. But what I, I can tell you is that artificial intelligence looks extremely hot right now, but it's not even as close to what it was like 60 years ago. In 1950s, people were crazy about all the artificial, artificial intelligence. They believed that AI would dominate the world. They would kill us, destroy us, and, and conquer the whole world. They had all the fantasies about AI. But afterwards, when maniac turns into phony, people realize that it's just another illusion. Blockchain, for example, it was created within 10 years. I, uh, if I'm correct, it was uh, first introduced in 2008. And the problem for blockchain is that, you know, in, in, technical, uh, in technical aspects, the problem for blockchain is that it sacrifices time for consistency. To guarantee the security and consistency, you have to pay time. You have to spend more time. That's why, you know, Bitcoin is experiencing a huge traffic jam right now. It's, it's uh, in a traffic jam today, yesterday, and it's going to be still in a traffic jam tomorrow. There's nothing you can do about it. And there's, until there's an automated solution, blockchain experiencing its problem. It happens to almost every high technology. IoT is no exception. I just changed up my mind, I just changed my mind because I already uh, showed you a few uh, cases. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you something more concrete. This one, this picture is network vending machine. It was first introduced by Xerox. It's the first practice of Internet of Things. In 1990, I believe it's more older than most of you. Yeah, you look all pretty young. Yeah, 1990, the first Internet of Things practice happened. It's been 27 years. And how many things are connected to the Internet now? Look at uh, the right side of those vending machines. There's, there's still, those are still offline vending machines. They look more, the looks are getting more contemporary, but they're not connected to the internet. What's wrong with it? Why? It's still not connected. Let me show you another example. On the left side, we're trying to connect our pipelines of a billion dollar revenue company, a billion dollar revenue factory connect them to the internet, and we're, we're going to use cloud computing to help them do the data analysis. This is happening in year 2017. Seriously, it's a billion dollar company. Their workers are using cell phones to pay their utility bills and their phone bills. But they're operating multi-billion dollar value of equipment, not connected, offline. Why? Why are they, are they still not online? It's, it has respect for profit, income, behind it. Why are you still far behind? We use IP, we use WeChat all the time, but why the factories are still not connected? It's year 20, 2017. What happened in the past 27 years? Let me go back to, uh, to the first slide. I'm going to show you the so-called inevitable IoT boom. The boom, the uh, uh, the government part, it shows, it suggests it's pretty optimistic. It shows 50 billion things to be connected in year 2020, which is three years from now. Very good number. And it also suggests that 50% of the IoT firms are not going to be the traditional, the old school firms. They're going to be the startups founded within three years. And the industry sector, industry sector, the business sector comes before the consuming market. You see, those numbers are so good, but we still don't know if the time, if, if, if it is right time. Is it going to be like another 
illusion of VR a hundred years ago. You know, VR was first introduced a hundred years ago. And it's going to be like another artificial intelligence or something else. Let me switch back to, uh, I skipped a few slides. So what I'm going to, the reason why we call the notion of bubble is that these things, the high tech, the real practice, the peak of a high technology, that would happen years or even decades away from now. If you're not paying enough attention to. The same thing happened to blockchain, the same thing happened to every high technology. You have really high expectations and then suddenly it drops down to, to the bottom, to the earth. You know it's going to happen, but you just can't wait. So today what I'm going to tell you is about what I think IoT really lacks, what kind of technology it really, what, what kind of factors it needs before we see the real bubble of the IoT uh, industry. So the signpost is pretty simple, it's the operating system. It's a 300 level course, undergraduate course, full time course. But you don't need to learn it. All you need to do is just go through with my slides and then you can understand why. Let's look at let's look at the path uh, let's look at the history. So when is your first when you purchase your first PC or when you purchase your first cell phone? A smartphone, not a feature phone, a smartphone. Around like 1995, 1998 for your first PC, and around 2008, 2008, 2009 for your first smartphone? Yes, you all know that. But PC happened long before that. You know, PC, PC was invented uh, in the 1980s or 1970s or even 1970s. What happened in those years? The operating system was not developed. The operating system was not there. Windows and Android opens the era of PC and mobile and the cell phone market, right? A bad example is Symbian. I was lucky enough, I was supposed to be lucky enough to join Nokia, a 150 year old company. 10 years ago, I was the director, technical director of the Symbian open platform, the youngest technical director ever happened within the past 150 years in Nokia. And I'm supposed to be proud of it, but actually Symbian failed. It failed, just like many others, it failed. Why it failed? It didn't do the job. Nokia phone you know, Nokia phone actually sees 70% of the market share, but then it failed because Symbian was not successful. Only a successful operating system gives you the era of that field, of that industry. So IoT for another example could be more, even more challenging. For the past 27 years, nobody, no single one firm, no single one company managed to build a platform or a true operating system to support all the applications, the ecosystem on it. You know that Windows and Android, they have ecosystem. They're compatible with all kinds of PCs or all kinds of uh, uh, mobile phones. And they have an ecosystem. You're using all the applications. You're not using Android, just the Android. You're using all the applications on the Android, right? But for IoT, it could be more complicated. For example, IoT, the devices are all fragmented. The fragmentation is one limitation. You're facing different types of different model types of uh, sensors, chips, the buttons, the lights, all, that, all kinds of things. Things are not identical to each other. The PCs, they're, they're just PCs. But things, things can be different, can be any format. So you're experiencing fragmentation. Fragmentation can be a pain in the ass. The second problem is the connectivity, the protocols. We're facing Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee for consumer product. That's the easiest one, that's the Mickey Mouse one. If you're talking about the industry, the low bus, the profit bus, can bus, anything else. And that's just the physical layer. The last lecturer, he introduced SMTP, uh, he said SMTP. 
SMTP, just like HTTP, like the other protocols, those are the transmitting protocols, and there are application protocols that can be thousands of them. Even for the easiest one, for Bluetooth, you all know Bluetooth, but do you know BR? What's the difference between BR and BRE? Two types of Bluetooth. You know, what's funny is that those types of Bluetooth, they cannot talk to each other. They cannot communicate with each other. They're not compatible. Yeah, that's another problem. And the, the last one is, you know, something we can do with, uh, with the blockchain, possibly, is network topology. A lot of edge computing, a lot of fault computing, people are, you, you heard experts repeatedly introduce fault computing and edge computing just because the network topology is, is, is a mess. People try to build IoT applications, but then they find that the private cloud, the public cloud, the hybrid cloud, even the hybrid cloud can solve their problems. They need, they need edge computing. They need computing on the local, the sensors, the chip, no, sorry, not sensors, just along the local gateways or the local chips or even the microcontrollers. They need computing powers because they need real-time feedback. They can't wait for even one millisecond. So, those problems, if you combine them together, this is why the IoT, IoT technology is still not sophisticated enough. We're still far behind. The application development is too hard. You know many software engineers, but how many of them are actually in the IoT field? They're doing IoT. How many, how many of your friends, they're doing mobile development, they're doing PC, they're doing web development. How many of them are doing the IoT development? You can't name many of them. Yeah, that's one problem. And when I started Ruff, the company that uh, I, uh, I don't want to say we're leading, right? Uh, uh, I don't want to use that word because uh, it's, not my, it's just not my type. But when I started my company three years ago, I aimed those problems. It's not easy, it took me three years or it could be even longer. We're trying to bring a real next generation of the IoT operating system. What I'm trying about, what I'm about to do, I'm not going to solve a problem for AI. I'm not going to solve a problem about blockchain. What I'm about to do is, I want to provide a real operating system that is compatible with all kinds of devices. What, no matter what model is, no matter what type of thing it is, it's going to be in my driver library and we can support it. And if any application developer wants to develop an application that supports one single chip sensor solution, regardless if it's from TI, ST, or Qualcomm, it's going to be compatible. You just need to focus on your logic. And by doing that, I use a lot of modules. I'm going uh, to go this very quickly because I, um, Maybe you don't have the background for that, but I'm just going to give you the, the uh, orientation about how the hierarchy of the, uh, the operating system is. Uh, first, I build a runtime. The runtime supports, the runtime, uh, actually the runtime is about um, how we deal with the C and assembly language. I know there are not many people who want to program in C or assembly. That's why I build a runtime, which you can use JavaScript. That's a very easy language. You can use JavaScript to call on all the rough operating system. And I provide driver libraries. And also the HAL, the hardware abstraction layer. It gives all the abstraction of all the devices. I, I, get, this, I get a unified abstraction of all the devices and drivers. And I generate APIs for the applications. So for application developers, all you need to do is you just focus on the API, focus on your business logic. You don't have to worry about whether it's going to be compatible with your cameras, with your sensors, with all the devices. So this is the hierarchy of that. And by doing this, I create, actually I create an ecosystem. Right now we have over 10,000 developers in our community. Those developers are mostly software developers. All they know, all their expertise are like mobile developers or the web developers. They have limited the knowledge about cell phones, they have limited the knowledge about PCs, they have limited the knowledge about 
the, all the kind, other kinds of devices like cameras, like sensors, you don't have the, the sufficient technology to support them to build the narrative from scratch. But what they can do is they can write applications on RAF. A even 12 year old boy can write a, um, their, their uh, RAF application. It, it's, it's actually my first, uh, it's my first um, engineer in my community. It's only 12, he's only 12 year old. And he actually, he, he actually uh, wrote an application of the traffic lights. And for hardware developers, actually I don't want to call them developers, they are actually they're doing the integration only. So for hardware uh, companies, they're just like Xiaomi, like Huawei, like, uh, like other, like Samsung, other companies. All you need to do is, you just do the integration, you build a chunky solution that supports rough operating systems. We have a lot of these partners. And by doing that, I actually build an ecosystem. So a lot of people, if your expertise is in software, you only need to focus on software. If your expertise is in hardware, all you need to do is to deal with the hardware. And when you let ordinary people, ordinary software engineers to get involved in this game, something magic happened. Actually, that's what I'm going to give you another example of how um, if, if you can just focus on your, your, your coding, focus on software coding, you can actually apply business innovation on it. Uh, there are three photos. And on the left side you see it's a solar power panel. Right now solar power panels are pretty hot. The power plants are pretty hot. The distributional power plants are going to be on almost every roof. I believe this building has solar power. Uh, I, I actually I saw it. The solar power is going to be on the, all the roof in the major cities. And the distributional, distributional solar power plants can be thousands or even millions. And IoT is almost, it's almost inevitable because you need to apply IoT to monitor those power plants for maintenance use. Otherwise, you cannot let someone to just patrol all the power plants and give you the feedback. You can't do that. Simply, you just can't do that. And by using a rough gateway, you see the gateway in the, uh, in the middle picture, by using apply a gateway, you are connect the gateway to the inverter, you're actually collecting data, all the data from the inverter. You will know that if the power plant is okay, it's good enough, uh, how much power is generated, uh, how much power is merged in the network. And innovation comes afterwards, is that a third party software developer, of course qualified third party software developer, they develop a mobile application that monitors how much power it's uh, uh, actually that uh, distribution of power plant generates and it's merged into the power network and how much money, how much revenue it generates. And if you build a mass, mass model about the, the ROI, if you uh, generate an ROI model, you will know that you will find out the yield. The yield is 12%. In this, in this case, the yield is 12%. And if you put thousands of them together, it's as effective security, EBS. All right? Financial companies are going to love it. I, I didn't come up with this idea, but the third party software developer, they come up with this idea, and they're making shape a lot of money. Why are they making more money than us? Well, whatever. So, wow. Uh, I've used, uh, I still have a lot of time. Yeah, I can talk about a lot of other stuff. So when we're talking about a high technology, if we want to know if that high tech is ready or not, the easiest thing to, to uh, identify is check the barrier, check the tech barriers. How many people can actually join the game of artificial intelligence or IoT, VR, MR, AR, whatever, whatever R it is, right? Anything comes with an R, it goes, good things happen. Yeah, but I just cannot catch those bubbles, yeah. If the technical barrier gets lower enough, I mean, I'm talking about lower enough, not, not just you, for, for people like, like me. It's just like when you think, okay, it's pretty easy 
Mobile development is easy, and IoT development, when you think IoT development is easy, you know that the time has come. A lot of people can join it, an ecosystem. It's just like blockchain. The, the sexiest part of blockchain is that it's a completely decentralized network. You know, centralized application, a lot of applications doesn't require decentralized network. The centralized system is going to do its job very well. But the beauty of decentralized network is that the more nodes, the more people join this game, more people join this game, a lot of power will be released. A lot of power will be released. So our slogan is, if you code easier, you change faster. What I believe that by, by doing rough, I don't want to make a company that makes tons of money, or a company that's like Oracle, it's a law firm. I don't want to build a company like those. But what I want, what I truly want deep in my mind is that, deep in my heart is that, I want to accelerate the IoT. It's been 27 years. We can't wait any longer. Thank you. That's my speech.